Now, we got a lot of things, a lot of racism going on in the world right now. Who's more racist, black people or white people? Black people. You know why? Because we hate black people, too. <laughs> Everything white people don't like about black people, black people really don't like about black people. <laughs> There's some shit going on with black people right now. It's like a civil war going on with black people. And there's two sides. It's black people and there's <laughs> And have got to go. Every time black people want to have a good time, if it ass, fuck it up. Can't do shit. Can't do shit. So this is from the 90s, right? It looks like it, yeah. Yeah, I... I um, I wonder how it would go over today. Well, let's see what he says. Yeah, let's say that. Yeah. Okay. Ain't that ass n fucking it up. Can't do nothing. Can't keep a disco open more than three weeks. Grand opening, grand closing. Can't go to a movie the first week it come out. Why? Because the shoe is at the screen. <laughs> what kind of ignorant shit is that? Hey, that's a good movie. That's so good, I gotta bust a cap in here. <laughs> hey, I love black people, but I hate n <laughs> Oh, I hate n Boy, I wish they let me join the club. <laughs> Shit, I do a drive-by from here to Brooklyn. <laughs> Tired of n man. You can't have shit when you're around n You can't have shit. You can't have no big screen TV. You can have it, but you better move it in at 3 in the morning. <laughs> Painted white hope think it's a bassinet. <laughs> Can't have shit in your house. Why? Because n****s will break in your house. N****s will live next door to you, break in your house, and come over the next day and go, I heard you got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know you robbed me. You ain't here shit because you was doing shit. <laughs> some credit for some shit they supposed to do. <laughs> for some shit they just supposed to do. A will brag about some shit a normal man just doesn't. A say some shit like, I take care of my kids. You some <laughs> 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 Oh, man. I will say I'm I'm guilty of this sometimes at home. Yeah. But I took out the trash. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I have to, you know, make people aware at yeah. home. Like this, I did this. Like I'm supposed to do that. Yeah. Oh man, I'm tired of this shit. You know what the worst thing about the worst thing about love to not know. Nothing make a happier than not knowing the answer to your question. Just ask a, a question. Any nigga, hey, hey, what's the capitalist I am? I don't know that shit. <laughs> Keep it <in> real. <laughs> <laughs> Love to keep it real. Real dumb. <laughs> hey, no, shit. So I tell you, a break in your house? You want to save your money? Put it in your books. Because <laughs> don't read. Just put the money in the books. Shit, books are like kryptonite to it. <laughs> Here's a book. No! No! It's not a book! No! No! Tired of this shit, man. Your kids can't fucking play nowhere. Every year the space gets smaller. Okay, you go from that corner to that corner. Oh, you go from that gate to that gate. By the time motherfuckers ten, he's just hopping in a circle like. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. Tired, tired, tired. Feed my four figure boy. I hate him. Boy, tired of this shit, man. I yearn, man. This is ignorant. Love being a singing about ignorance. I heard some song the other day. It's the first of the month. The singing welfare carols. On the first day of welfare, my true luck ain't to me. I wish. 
wish you a man well fit in a happy food stand. <laughs> the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Now they got some shit they're trying to get rid of welfare. So every time you see welfare in the news, they always show black people. Black people don't give a fuck about welfare. They're <laughs> shaking in their boots. <laughs> oh, they gonna take our shit. Shit, a black man that got two jobs, going to work every day, hates a nigga on welfare. Let's like, get a job. I got two, you can't get one. <laughs> I would give you lazy ass for the mind. But you get fucked up and get laid off, they wouldn't have nothing in for 10 years. Shit, a black woman that got two kids going to work every day, busting her ass, hates a bitch with nine kids getting a one bitch. And like, bitch, stop fucking. Stop fucking. Stop it. Put the dick down. Put it down. Get a job. Yes, you can get a job. And get a job holding dicks. Whatever you do, get paid to do it. <laughs> I hate to break, I, I don't, I feel almost guilty breaking in on Chris Rock for a second, but um, it just reminds me, I, I took care of this nurse one time who's sort of, you know, hardworking. She worked in a dialysis clinic uh, that was Medicaid and she was rabidly against benefits. Like everyone she saw was on, you know, was, was basically getting government benefits. And she, I think she might've been getting some government benefits too. I mean, she had a hard, she, I think she was a single mom. She had a hard life in some ways, but she was just so against government benefits because she's like, she sees so much abuse with it. And so we, we just started talking because I was like, well, but you see the benefit of the government benefits. And she said, yeah, but I see all the abuse and this needs to stop. Anyway, it's just, it's just, uh, and, and then that's like a disconnect between the way Democrats and Republicans talk past each other because you know, Democrats are always saying to poor people who vote Republican, why are you voting against your interests? Mm -hmm. And those, you know, people who are, you know, of a lower socioeconomic status who are Republicans are saying, look, I just want a chance. Like just, you know, don't, I, I don't want handouts. I want a chance to better myself, my community. And I see all the abuse around it. Let's just get a fair playing field and see how things pan out. Yeah. Anyway. It ain't, it ain't all black people on welfare, shit. White people on welfare too. But we can't give a fuck about them. We just gotta do our own thing. We can't go, oh, they fucked up, we could be fucked up. That's ignorant. White people on the L. Because first of all, they try to make it look like, you know, there ain't even that many black people in the country, okay? Black people are 10% of the fucking population. Black people in New York, DC, LA, Chicago, Atlanta, like 10 places, okay? <laughs> Black people in Minnesota. So all you find, only black people in Minnesota is Prince and Kirby Puckett. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, the whole rest of the country, the other 40 states, is filled up with broke ass white people. Broke ass, living in a trailer home, eating mayonnaise sandwiches, fucking their sister, listening to John Cougar Mellencamp records. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. <laughs> and they need your help. <laughs> nah, man. And I see some black people looking at me. Man, why you gotta say that? Why you gotta say that? It ain't us, it's the media. It ain't us, it's the media. The media has distorted our image to make us look bad. Why must you come down on us like that, brother? It ain't us, it's the media. Please cut the fucking shit, okay? 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 When I go to the money machine tonight, all right? Looking over my back for the media. I'm looking. <laughs> 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 shit. Ted Koppel ain't never took shit from me. Tab. So you think I got three guns in my house because the media outside? Oh shit, Mike Wallace, run! <laughs> Fuck out of here, man! Tired of this shit. Tired, tired, tired of this shit. He's great. He's a goat. He's, he's, he's a goat. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the whole welfare concept and topic is, is a tough one because 
when my family and I came to the country, we were on welfare. Yeah. And we needed welfare. Yeah. And uh, because we were not allowed to work, we were not allowed to do anything and somehow had to eat. So it was very, very helpful and very important. But at the same time, my parents could not wait to get out and to get off welfare because they saw generations on the welfare system, in the welfare system. And one of the things they were concerned about is that this is an easy trap. This is an easy thing to get stuck in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's two things. I mean, I think one is the culture you hope for is one that says, look, when you, you know, when you're down on your luck, your options are limited, you need some kind of safety net like mm-hmm. welfare to help springboard you back. But you also want it, that to be temporary. You know, right. Right? You, you yeah. want it to be a way to rebound, reset. And then, I mean, there's so many stories of people who are incredibly successful, who at one point or another were on welfare, food stamps, whatever. And look, and, and they're proud of the fact that they were able to you know, move forward from that and then give back. And they wanted to get off of it as fast as possible. Part of the problem, you know, I think Chris Rock kind of alludes to this is that there, there can become a culture of there's no shame in it. It's just the way it is. This is just, like you said, generational that, you know, and then, and then the other thing is there, you know, who was it that said, I think it was a Warren Buffett, show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcome or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, the incentives need to be set up to incentivize people to get off of those programs. I mean, that's a problem with a big debate in Princeton, as you know, is low-income housing because mm-hmm. we have a lot of low-income housing. We have a lot more being built. And a lot of people are big proponents of it. And, you know, they're definitely in favor of the idea. This is a great, you know, this is this needs to be there to allow you know young families to get access to good educational systems and all of that. And also, you know, but the, the other side of that coin is, that that gets abused eventually, mm-hmm. right? Like people stay longer than they need to, and it's hard to move people on and then give other people that access. And right. I mean, and and part of the problem is the people that are running these systems is the government, and they're just you know the government is just not good at these things. And and right. you know not to say the private industry is maybe that much better when it comes to certain things, but definitely the government is not efficient at it. Um, and yet, definitely there's a need for it. Ah, this is this is the this is. This is the hard, this is the hard thing. I mean, I'm glad it exists. And I think, I mean, I, I, you know, I was too young to really, I I just didn't care at the time to be interested in politics, but in the nineties, this was the big conversation. This is one of Bill Clinton's big things was welfare reform. And the idea that, look, we're going to tie welfare to some kind of, to some kind of work. Right. But, you know, and then, I mean, this is a little bit tangential to that, but I remember I was having a, a, a conversation with a pharmacist from New Zealand who is staying with my parents. And in New Zealand, everything is, you know, there's a lot more socialization and uh, medicine, for example, is totally socialized. And he was saying that he felt that basically healthcare, as an example, is a right and everyone deserves the same healthcare. And I was saying, and I was asking him, how far do you extend that? So I tried to give him a ridiculous example that I thought was so obviously abusive of a system that I thought, and then I thought we could go from there. So for example, I said, well, suppose you have someone who's on welfare and they have seven children and all that, you know, they, they live totally off government benefits. And the woman wants to do IVF to have an eighth child that will also be on government benefits. Do you think that the, that the government should pay for the IVF for that, for that person? And he said, yeah, because someone else could pay for it. So that means the government should have to pay for it for that person. And to me, that's like, a, I'm like, I was like, you, you know, that, that sounds insane to me. I, I think clearly that's an instance where that's too far. But you do see, I mean, and, and I think a lot of it is the system you grew up in, right? Because yeah. to me, it just doesn't make any sense that that would be, you know, that's a totally elective procedure already. Everyone's on welfare. You would, you know, you know get your get your house in order. And then if you want to do IVF later, let's have that conversation. Yeah. But um, sure that you can support the child. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Speaking to the uh, about the system that you're in, it's the community that you're in too. And so what Chris Rock was talking about all the time is that, so me coming from a Ukraine, but Russian speaking community, there's the same thing exists in, in that community. You have a number of people that are sure they're kind of like us, but no, they're the ones that are going to steal your stuff. Mm-hmm. And so it was always where someone would get a nicer car and it's somebody they don't know. And they say, oh, this, that's a nice car. There would, there would always be a, Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's not that nice. There's nothing to see here. Just no, no, no. I'm still right. living in an apartment. Just, just move on. Right, right, right. And that's also why you're seeing 
all this conversation about the the South American gangs starting to operate in U.S. Mm. and most people that are speaking out about it is people from South America because most most groups will go after their own first, yeah. at least first. You know, most most Russian speaking is. because they know it because they, 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 they yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. easier to go against something that you know because you've already done it in the old country. Yeah, and you know. Yeah, you know the reaction. You know the reaction. You know, you know, you know the cultural norms, and you right, know how right. people are going to react, and you right. have the you have the heuristics for it. You have you know yeah. how you're going to circumvent that. So it, it's terrible to have anybody going against anybody, but also your own. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you ideally you want communities that you know are proud of their own when they are successful. Yeah, and that you know, but but, but like you were saying, sometimes. That's not the case, right? Where I don't know if this is if this is true, but they say that you don't have to put a lid on uh, on with crabs that when you're boiling them, because as soon as one gets to the surface and gets close to close to getting out of the pot, the others will b- drag them down. Mm. I have no idea whether that's that's being said yeah. as a parable or if this is actually. Yeah, true. I was just watching a documentary on the Soviet Union, and the the person who was presenting it said there's an old Russian joke, but of course you'll tell me if this is right. But he said that the joke was something like during so, during Soviet times, you know, my my neighbor got a got a goat and he's in the, or uh, whatever not a goat, whatever a mule Something's and he's yeah. farming his field. Someone needs to shoot that mule, <laughs> 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 right? So just bring everything back yeah, down, yeah, so, so we yeah. can all be yeah, 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 yeah. I don't need I don't need to have my life better. I just don't want your life to be right. better than mine. There's, there's yeah. I don't know if it was from this special, but I remember Chris Rock had a joke that was, um, you know, he's talking about his, his the community came out of and that you know if somebody somebody comes back from jail and everyone you know and he said people will say like ah oh, you know welcome back you know being very supportive and then someone goes off and gets a PhD and comes back to the community like. You think you're better than me? You know, it's like, <laughs> and that's that's what we need to. That's that's yeah. why every community needs to work to not to not have that right to to be right. to be celebratory of their successes and 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 want their young people to emulate that. Obviously, yeah. anyway. Well, Chris Rock is the best. We could. I would. I would be happily happily listen to him all day. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to hit that like button, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.